Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. A 30-year-old female came with high-grade fever with chills and triggers. She had previous history of chronic otitis media. She complains of severe headache and projectile vomiting. Following it she was admitted and CT of brain was intaken. What is the diagnosis? Hurry up your time is running. The answer is lateral sinus thrombosis. It is the inflammation of the lateral or sigmoid sinus, with the formation of thrombosis inside the lumen of sinus. It is usually caused as a complication of chronic ear infection like CSOM. Let's understand the normal physiology. The superior and inferior sigital sinus joins together at occiput, and continues on both the side as transverse sinus. Near the ear, transverse sinus drops down to form sigmoid or lateral sinus, which terminates into internal jugular vein. As sigmoid sinus is nearest ear, any infective ear pathology can cause sigmoid sinus thrombosis as complication. On the other hand cavernous sinus is closely related to eye. So, any deep-seated eye infection like orbital cellulitis or abscess, will cause cavernous sinus thrombosis. This is the basic pathology in these diseases. Streptococcus and pneumococcus type 3 are the commonest organism causing lateral sinus thrombosis. These organisms are highly virulent and cause damage to vessel wall. The underlying collagen and fibrin in the vessel wall triggers the formation of thrombus. The thrombus keeps accumulating in the lumen and may dislodge to various sites. Clinical picture include high-grade fever which is highly swinging in nature. Patient feels well in between the attacks. When the temperature graph is plotted, it looks like the picket fence. Hence, it is commonly called picket fence fever. Headache and projectile vomiting are due to increased intracranial pressure. Tenderness of mastoid and anterior border of sternocleidomastoid. Reisinger sign is the edema and erythema over mastoid due to thrombosis of emissary vein. Toby Ayer test or Krakensta test is increase in CSF pressure on compression over internal jugular vein of normal side. Crowback test engorgement of retinal vein on compression over internal jugular vein of affected side. <music> Investigation of choice is CTMRI. It shows empty delta sign. It is due to the enhancement of vessel wall, but not the contents. Here is an easy way to remember it. Say hi to Toby. He has a garden full of grass and fenced it around. Every morning he keeps food to crows in a delta-shaped container over the fence. That's it. Remember this scene, Toby, for Toby air test. Fence for picket fence fever. Grass for Grisinger sign. The delta-shaped container for delta sign in CT. Crow for Crowbeck test. Treatment is antibiotics and if there is no improvement after 48 hours, then perform radical mastodectomy and remove the thrombus. That's all for today, hope you have learned something new. Hit the subscribe button and turn post notification on. Now for today's question. What is pseudic sign? What is the syndrome associated with it? Don't confuse with pseudic dystrophy. Comment down your answers below. Catch you up in more interesting topics. Until then, it is bye from Dr. Harrison.